We haven't had my favorite student for a while, have we? Sorry, Mason, it's not you. It's good old Anne. She is so fun to teach, she gets everything right. Do I have the screen frozen still? I think I do. There we go. Let's try that. Y'all ready? Uh, all right. What does the word static mean? Uh, you could, I would take uh, not moving, sure. Uh, not moving, unchanging, staying, anything like that. So there's, I, I'm lying because this isn't quite accurate, but for now it is. There's two main types of electricity. There's current electricity, which is what you have going through the wires. You can think a current, a, a river current moving. And then there's static electricity. That's when you let charge build up, build up, build up, build up, build up. When an object is negatively charged, does it have more electrons or protons? Maddie. It's supposed to say E negative. Can I get that in the right? That, that, one more down. There. Electrons. Uh, conductors allow or don't allow electrons to travel freely? Allow. What that also means is conductors, Brady, won't build up much of a charge. They won't build up a big static charge because if you try and put a bunch of charge on, to, no, no, they're just going to pass the electrons on down to the ground or whatever other thing they're touching. Insulators allow or don't allow electrons to travel freely. Don't allow. One mark, one mark. By the way, all these are one mark unless I say different or one mark for each blank. Allowing charge to flow into the earth is called grounding and you thought that was your social life on the weekends no you thought that's what your parents did when you're missing science homework no it's actually a science term uh hey what's force defined as uh when the jedi mind power no that's star wars uh sorry science push or a pull that works so when you apply a force to an object you're either pushing or pulling it Contact forces only affect, you know what? That's a typo, that should be. I'll have to fix that, because that annoys me. Only affect objects that they can, what word am I looking for here? Touch, come in contact with. In fact, you could say contact forces can only affect objects they can contact. That, that, that would be a really obvious way to remember it. There you go. An electric force is a push or a pull between charges. You know what? I'm going to say charged objects, but uh, charges works. The only thing is they should be in separate objects. Oh, but yeah, okay. This one some people had tr some trouble with. An electric force is an example of a or an. Your hint is when I put that, it's probably an. It's probably going to start with a vowel because it can act on something. Hmm. So you could say either indirect for force or if you said action at a distance force because it can act on something at a distance or without touching. I would take that without contact. I think I told you uh, I used the word indirect because induction was an indirect way of charging something, right? Uh, complete the following sentences using the following terms. Each term may be used more than once. So we're going to use the words attracts, repels, positive, neutral or negative. A negative charge is repelled by a a positive charge blank, a negative charge. A charged object blank, a neutral object. Attracts. By the way, it's not as strong as two separately, two oppositely charged objects. The force isn't as strong, but it's there. That's why the balloon doesn't stick like wah, wah to the wall, it, but you can get it to stick to the wall. A negative object attracts an unknown object. This unknown object could be positive or neutral. A 
positive object repels. Uh, I think D is going to be worth two marks, by the way, because there's two blanks, but we'll double check when we add everything up. And uh, I think nine was also worth two marks because there's two blanks, but we'll double check. I might have made them half mark each. I can't remember. Use the diagram below to answer number 11. Imagine the same setup for each of the hanging spheres. Okay. Somehow they're hovering, but just imagine there's strings or something holding them in place. A positively charged object is attached to the table as shown above. There's my positively charged object. Check. Use an arrow to indicate the direction of the force on the negative. Okay, what direction will this feel a force? Left, right, up, or down? So I'll give you one mark for that. Uh, which way will this positive charged object feel a force? Give you one mark for that. What's the charge on this thing here? Oh, that's what I was trying to get across. By the way, technically what I should have done is done the same number of pluses and minuses, but so I'm not saying there's no electrons and no protons in it, because then it wouldn't have any atoms. I am saying same number of protons and electrons. Which way will it feel a force? Uh, because of the big positive. Down, but if you said all three, I'll take that. That's actually some deep thinking. I wasn't, you know what? I should have just said only look at the uh, the big positive, good point. But yeah, it would also feel a gentle tug that way and a gentle tug that way. Although you could argue those might cancel each other out. You just you'd be left with that, I don't know. So three marks for that. Uh, use the words increased or decreased to complete each of the following statements. To, incre to increase the electric force between two charge objects, the distance separating them should be you move them closer, decreased. In other words, the closer the objects get, the stronger the force. That's why you noticed with that ruler and the ball, the ball didn't move much, but as I moved the ruler closer and closer, then the ball got repelled even more and more because the force was getting stronger as I moved it closer. To increase the electric force, to increase the electric force, the amount of charge on one or both objects should be also increased. If I want to decrease the electric force between two charged objects, the distance separating the two charges should be move them further apart. If I want to decrease the electric force between two charged objects, the amount of charge on one or both of the objects should be also decreased. In fact, what we often did when you touched it with your finger and then touched your finger to the sink, you uh, brought the charge down to zero. You grounded it. You made it neutral. Conduction is charging a neutral object by... Oh, you know what? We can do one. If you said touching it, that's fine. Uh, I'm going to go uh, by contacting, by contact. Conduction requires contact. That's a good way to remember it, I think. Induction is charging a neutral object by? And if you said indirect, even though grammatically that's yucky, I'll take it. I'm just going to say uh, not touching. Induction is indirect, not touching. It's just you don't say, uh, hi, you and I are indirect. You say you and I are not touching, right? If you charge an object using conduction, you have uh, A, transferred electrons to the object, or B, caused the electrons already in the object to move without changing the number of electrons. What about if you charge an object using induction? You have A, transferred electrons to the object, or B, caused the electrons already in the object to move without changing the number of electrons. That's what's going on there. So number 17, I'll take a lot of answers. It says, explain why a neutral object will be attracted to a charged object. What'd you say here? 
Hannah. Ooh, I like that. Did you steal that right from the textbook or did you make that up yourself? I love the, I, I would say attract, by the way, the word bond is typically reserved for chemical bonds. So I might not, if I was a science nerd, use that word, but certainly attract. I, I said, uh, the, oh, you know what, I'm, this is going to be, I'm going to have to handwrite it because my typing is too big. Uh, I said, come here, pen stuck. Charges inside a neutral object, first of all, can move around. That's one key idea, and that's what you said, Hannah. And what that is gonna, what's going to happen then is Nick's rule is going to come into play. Nick, like charges, okay. unlike charges. Okay. So the like charges will get as far away as possible. The unlike charges will stay closer, and because they're closer, their force of attraction will be stronger than the like charges' force of repulsion. So that even though those like charges are still repelling, they're further away. That's why, by the way, a neutral object, the force between it and a charged object isn't as strong as if you have completely opposite charges, because there is also a tiny repulsive force going on there as well, just not as big. It cancels out. Uh, can move around. Then I said, creating a an unlike charged section closest to the object. So the next time you rub a balloon on your hair and you stick it to a wall, and I'm a child enough at heart that I'll still often do that when I'm with my nieces and nephews and there are balloons and they think that's great. Think about what you're doing. You're moving electrons around and you're doing it effortlessly. It's kind of cool. Hey, uh, the amount of charge on an object is measured in units called? I won't ask you this on a test, but I always like kids to know what's really big and really small. One coulomb, really big, really small, or kind of middle? Uh, huge. One, if you absorbed one coulomb of charge all at once, probably your skin would start to burn, and it might very well be enough to stop your heart and kill you. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, a lightning has, bolt has 15 coulombs, so you'd be absorbing about, on average, there are bigger and smaller lightning bolts, but you'd basically been averaging, you'd be absorbing about one-tenth, one-fifteenth of a lightning bolt. Not good. A substance has 25,000 electrons, 24,500 protons, and 25,000 neutro neutrons. Is the charge on this object positive, negative, or neutral? Hmm. Convince me. By the way, are you starting to see why I really wish Ben Franklin had called electrons positive because it would be much nicer to be doing arithmetic just with positive numbers. And then you could say more electrons, more positive. Less electrons, less positive, negative as it is now. Less electrons, that's less negative, which makes it pos more negatives. Uh, but yeah, I agree, negative. Object A is negatively charged and is attracted to object B. What possible charge is object B? Wrong. Sorry. Partly right. Or half mark if you said positive. Half mark if you said neutral. That was sneaky, Mr. Duick. I don't think so. Object A has 2,000 protons and 2,000 electrons. What's its charge? Neutral. Neutral. After touching, did the numbers not show up for you guys here? Do you guys have numbers next to this question or not? OK, I'll have to go look and see what happened. I thought they were in my diet. Anyway, OK. After touching another object, object A becomes positively charged. What can you say about the number of protons in object A after object A becomes 
positively charged. There are more protons, there are less protons, the number of protons is unchanged. Yeah. One, two, or three? Three? See, I, 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 most of us call that three. Did you say D? Like there was, okay. Yeah, that's what you said. Why? I, it became positively charged. Didn't it gain protons? They're locked in the nucleus. And again, this is my Ben Franklin rant. I really wish he'd named them opposite. It would have been more convenient, but we're stuck with what we got. Pardon me? But, but tr tricky-ish, but re realize everything's happening with the electrons. And if I was clever, I'd go on a Ben Franklin rant right now and say, geez, I wish he'd made them positive because the math would sure be easier. Anyway, okay. Uh, what can you say about the number of electrons after object A becomes positively charged? Uh, object A has more, object A has less, or it's unchanged? The second one. So I guess object A, when it became positively charged, what really happened is object B wanted electrons more than object A. Is that everything? Okay, let me pause the video for a second. Let me first of all see if the quiz is